Okay, so listen, I've been editing with Final Cut Pro for about five, four and a half to five years now. And before that, I edited with Premiere Pro. And there was a whole reason I switched back in like late 2020, early 2021 that had to do with the M1 chips that were going into new MacBooks. And it was basically because the M1 chips that were coming out in the MacBooks were not compatible with Premiere Pro or Premiere Pro wasn't compatible with them. And very quickly I had to kind of make a shift because we were struggling to edit videos. So I'm a girl who's pretty dedicated to what she's using. And a lot of the reason, I do like to try out new softwares, but a lot of the reason is because it's hard to like change softwares and it's hard to like learn something new and all the things. But um, I'm officially switching. I'm officially switching. I made a video a year ago about this software, but I'm officially switching because I do think it is the best editing software out there for YouTubers or even like for higher end editing. And so I want to tell you all about it. And by the way, the software is called DaVinci Resolve. I'm not keeping that a secret for any reason. It was just like how my hook ended, you know, at the beginning of my video. And this is not sponsored by them at all. Um, also, if you've been following along with my matcha journey, I found a place locally that always has it in stock and it is so friggin' good. Like I told my husband a minute ago, I don't know what they put in it, but if it's crack, I'm okay with that. So first and foremost, DaVinci Resolve is literally a free software and it, you can go download it like right now, like anybody can go download it, that allows you to have kind of advanced editing features like in Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro for free. Now, there is a paid version, but honestly, you get so much with the free version, most people, don't even need the paid version. And when you do, you probably can afford to upgrade. And also when you do upgrade, I paid a lot more for Final Cut Pro and paying for Adobe subscription over the years for Premiere Pro than what the paid version of DaVinci Resolve is. So even when you do upgrade, I don't even think that's that bad. So all of the features that you're used to using on any kind of editing software, you're gonna get with the free version and then some. So I have not upgraded to the paid version yet. I probably will, but I haven't. And it has done me just fine. So everything I can do in Final Cut Pro, I can do with the free version of DaVinci. Now, the reason I might upgrade to the paid version, it does allow you to have like higher resolution exports. So if you're doing like really high quality work, which is not like I'm doing 4K and that's the extent of it. So that like, that's not me, but it might be somebody. But then it also has like AI features built in, like the tracking features or like skin smoothing, some audio correction that I think I will need. So eventually you might want to get to the paid version, but honestly, the free version is pretty damn good. So one of the reasons I want to talk about this <laughs> is because um, I think a lot of times people get stuck in the in-between. So it's like, oh, I'm using iMovie or I've used iMovie or I've used CapCut or like some kind of like cheap editing software. And I'm ready to make a jump, but there's options like there's Premiere Pro, there's Final Cut Pro, there's DaVinci and they're not sure where to jump to, but also the budget comes into the conversation. You know, like Final Cut Pro, I think was like $500. Um, Premiere Pro is a monthly fee. You have to get like the, the top end um, Adobe subscription to do that. And so I really wanna talk about DaVinci Resolve because it's really damn good. And honestly, it is better in a lot of ways than these other softwares. And if you're going like high end production value, it is better in that way, like most, high-end people doing like editing and color correction for commercial work or whatever, they're using DaVinci. Also, the fact that I do what I do for a living and I tell y'all things and I teach y'all things and I give you recommendations, I really wanted to switch to DaVinci Resolve to kind of say, okay, this is a good robust software that I can like very easily and very um, confidently recommend as a good software for those of you who are like, beginners or whatever. Um, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. And one of the cooler features that I personally think is awesome. Um, and I don't know for sure that this is the free or the paid or both. Um, and I need to dig into it, but you can actually edit on the cloud. And what that would mean or could mean is that you can share your editing file. So for instance, let's say I start editing a video and I do, you know, X percentage of it, but then I want to hand it off and you know, to this other person. In the past, that would look like either like taking all of my editing files from like Final Cut Pro or whatever and putting them on like a hard drive and sharing it that way, putting them on in a, um, in like a cloud service like Dropbox or Google Drive that they then have to download to use and that has a lot of issues or just 
downloading the video and letting them like start from scratch, which leads to quality issues and things like that. But with this cloud service, I could easily edit within the cloud if I know I'm going to be editing with somebody else and easily pass things off. So there's a girl on my team who edits for me sometimes, but she's definitely, you know, learning and she's learning my style and we're constantly changing things. And so this would be really nice for me to be able to like pop in to the edit and be like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. Let's change this around um, and let actually do that and even show her how, or again, to kind of hand off the edit. Okay, we're gonna go over here to my computer and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite features of DaVinci Resolve. Actually, one of my favorite features <laughs> before I even pull it up is the fact that it takes less space on my computer. So Final Cut Pro takes a shit ton of space on my computer. And here's the thing. With Premiere Pro, I had to use proxy files. I would have to like create proxy files and edit those and then it would like regenerate the regular file. It was like a whole thing, you know? And it added so much to the process. And it's one of the reasons that I switched Final Cut Pro to begin with a few years ago was because I didn't have to use the proxy files. For me, that's worth it. Some people don't mind editing with proxy files, I do. And I had just gotten the new like M1 Max MacBook Pro, which I still have, which is still my main like beast of a computer over here. Um, and it does a really good job of editing and it does a really good job of being a workhorse. And so I just didn't need the proxies, but, but it takes a shit ton of room on my computer to host all of these files when I'm editing them. And when I'm in the middle of an edit or it's going to take me a while to edit a video, or I'm waiting to hear back from a brand who's like, oh yeah, you should you know, publish that. I need to keep those editing files open and I need to keep those editing files accessible and it just bogs my computer down. Now, again, this is a workhorse. It does not actually bog her down, but she does get full and I want to avoid that. And in DaVinci Resolve, it doesn't like do as big of a files. And again, you can use like cloud servers. I just feel like it has a lot more built in, like the actual built in features, transitions, things like that than any of these other softwares. I usually have to go get like plugins or add-ons or effects or whatever, but DaVinci has a lot of that built in, which I love. Okay, so these are a few things that I really just love inside of DaVinci Resolve compared to Final Cut Pro. So one and first and foremost is this little like situation down here. It basically walks you through the process and, uh, and kind of breaks out the steps into each process or into each like section. So in this section, this is just your media library. And cut, this is, you can go through and do your raw cutting right here. And it makes cutting really, really easy. Um, on edit, this is where you do everything else. So this is where you can like, add effects and you know, add all of these types of things. Like that's there. And then we can go to color and this is where we edit the color. So if you'll notice back on edit, all of my color down here is raw still. Um, but if I go to color, this is where I'm editing the color. So if like I want this clip, um, the color to be different, I can. If I wanna go to this one, I can edit the color. You edit with nodes, which is nice because you can like turn things on and off. A Final Cut Pro has something similar because each effect has its own thing. But if I wanted to be able to say like, okay, I'm gonna apply curves to this section and I'm gonna apply, um, saturation here and I'm going to apply the LUT here, I would have to go in and have those in separate adjustment layers in Final Cut Pro and um, turn them on and off. And so it is nice to like be able to have these here. Um, you can also copy and paste. So if I want to like get the color just right on one section, I can copy and paste it to the rest of it. Um, so this is where you do the color. This is where you do more of like the audio. So if you want to add music or whatever, you can do it here. And then here's your deliver section. So really easy, like straightforward way to like walk you through the process of, you know, getting, getting the video out essentially. So a few things that I really, really like about DaVinci Resolve is that there's some things built in that I needed extra things for in Final Cut Pro. So for instance, if we're doing jump cuts, which are when like there's a hard cut um, between one clip and another. So let me just find one of those for you. So like right here, if we're doing a jump cut, um, you know, normally it's a really hard cut. They actually have 
a smooth cut transition that kind of helps you smooth out that jump cut. You'll see here, you can tell it's like a little like, bleep, um, and basically what it does is kind of helps like helps easily transition from clip before to clip after without a lot of like jumpiness, you know? Um, so I love that that is just built in. I also love, so if I want to like zoom in, you know, that, um, effect where it like zooms in slowly or it like zooms out slowly. Um, that was an effect I had to like go downloads from somewhere else in Final Cut Pro. And here, it's literally just called dynamic zoom. I actually applied that somewhere in this one. Right there it is. Now watch. I'm not willing to bet on sometimes. So see how it like did that gradual zoom that a lot of people want to use in their effects. Like that's built in, which is spectacular. They have a lot of the same kind of filters and effects and things built in that Final Cut Pro does. And I just think they go above and beyond a little bit on that. Also up here, I do really like that. Again, the... um the effects, the things are kind of in their own section. Again, Final Cut Pro does this too, but I feel like this is just a little bit easier. Um, I will say like, this is going to take a while for me to get used to for sure. I had to Google a lot of like whatever, you know, a bunch of things. Um, but, and I will say like, I'm not loving that there's not like a magnetic situation. So in Final Cut Pro, if I clip, so if I go here and I like, clip this clip out, right? And I delete this clip. These clips here are gonna smush and automatically hook to the clips before it. And I really like that. Okay, so I did actually figure out how to do the magnetic timeline situation that I was trying to figure out. And it's just in the cut timeline. So I'm gonna do my rough cut in the cut timeline and it automatically pops back and does the automatic magnetic thing I was missing. And that was quite literally like the only feature that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna miss this if I can't figure it out. So we gotta figure it out. Super easy peasy. Layout of the text, the background of the text, I can transform the text in some really interesting ways. And I just think the text box is a little bit easier to use. I just overall think that it's more robust than Final Cut Pro. There are some features that I'm gonna have to figure out. There are some things that, you know, like, I have no idea how they work in here, but I think that overall the free version of this, of DaVinci Resolve is like quite literally at the same level as the $500 version of Final Cut Pro. And then when you go above and beyond and you get the paid version of DaVinci, that's when you're getting even more than you could get in Final Cut Pro, at least without like plugins and things like that. Okay, another favorite feature <laughs> that I actually just discovered as I was putting this video you're watching together. And it's basically the way I'm exporting stills. So what I do for my thumbnails is I think about the thumbnail ahead of time, which I very much so advise that you do, but I'm thinking about the thumbnail ahead of time. And while I'm filming in the same shirt and in like whatever, I will go ahead and like video for the thumbnails. So I record a clip of video where I'm like, ah, e. <laughs> Ooh, right? Like, like these different things that I might think I want for the thumbnail. Sometimes there are times when I get the, like, you know, have to take a still shot, but for the most part, it's a video file that I'm using to get my thumbnail. And in Final Cut Pro, I can totally export those and I always have, but DaVinci makes it actually way easier. So you go to the timeline in the color profile and while it's up there, you can just right click and hit grab still. And then it pops them all over in a gallery and you just export the whole gallery. And that is like actually so much easier than the way Final Cut Pro has it like set up to be able to do this. Learning a new editing software is not for the faint of heart. And that's just completely honest. Even if you're like a skilled editor and you've been editing for years, learning a new software is hard. It's intimidating, it's scary, it's time consuming, like all the things. And especially if you're someone who's not super like, you know, into the editing things, it can be like really scary and really intimidating. But my suggestion here is to Google as you go. So all of this stuff is very Googleable or YouTubeable, right? And so if you like, how to import my footage into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, let's go Google that. So for instance, if I wanna know like how to color correct um, in DaVinci Resolve, I can go search for that, right? And then I can like click on my preferred thing. Do I wanna read about it? Do I wanna look at pictures? Do I wanna watch a video? And then when I'm looking at it, if it's like, oh, you gotta add nodes and I'm like, what the hell is a node? I can go in and be like, what's a node? And then 
I can learn it as I go. And once I've learned it and once I use it and once I continue using it, I continue knowing how to do it. So I could, so I could sit here and give you like a crash course in how to use DaVinci Resolve. But honestly, I think the best thing is to go in, get started and Google as you go. How do I import my footage? How do I watch it at 2x speed? How to edit at 2x speed in DaVinci Resolve. And basically it's exactly the same as it is in Final Cut Pro. So that makes it really easy for me. So Google as you go, that's how you'll learn this software. And you'll be able to get so much more out of a software like DaVinci than you can out of something like iMovie or even CapCut. CapCut makes things really easy and I'm not like crapping on it at all. But when it comes to the best like free advanced editing software that YouTubers can use, DaVinci is going to be my go-to.